Hello and welcome to another action-packed educational video on personality testing in the workplace. My name is Richard Still and I am the Chief System Architect for Online Talent Manager, a psychometric test developer based in the Netherlands. This video will give you a basic understanding of how OTM tests are scored using the STAND9 scale, how norm groups are created, what they define, and how to use them when interpreting your test results. The first thing to understand about psychometric testing is that there is no universal, absolute scale that we can rely on to measure you. When you take a personality test, such as our Octogram Work and Leadership Style Test, we give you a score that represents your relationship to others who have completed the same test. This process is called normalization, and this is how it works. We ask several hundred people to fill in a questionnaire and categorize them based on their education level, uh, experience, age, gender, and the reason that they took the test. Each of these categories represents a separate norm group, so when we calculate your scores, one of the pieces of information in your report is a description of who was in that norm group. To create a norm group, we gather the results of all the respondents together and then we plot out the answers of everyone on a particular trait. When we do this, we start to see a bell curve form. And this is what we expect to see in biological systems. And it is a diagnostic for measuring the quality of the test itself. If the graph of the results doesn't look like a bell curve, we have to go back to the drawing board to figure out what went wrong. For our next step, we chop that bell curve up into nine equally spaced slices and then number them. This is called the STAND9 scale, and your score represents which part of this group your raw score most closely matches. As you can see in this graph, the score of 5 represents a lot of people. 20% of the test respondents will fall into this score. You can think of the 5 as the average. In personality testing, higher scores and lower scores do not represent a judgment on your quality. It represents how your scores relate to the average of the norm group. There is no bad or good result in a personality test. We're just describing how you feel about things, what you think is important, how you communicate, your motivations, etc., etc. And it might be that your personality is a better or worse fit for a particular position, but there is no judgment on your quality as a human being. We really do make an effort in our reports to stress the positives about a candidate's results. So the stand nine represents your relationship to average. You might be familiar with other personality testing systems, so let's look at some of those now. Some companies have tests that want to drop you into a category. You are an A or a B. This kind of binary on-off result isn't very useful because it lacks nuance. There's no space for average in such a model, and it does not reflect how real people react and behave in the world. If you look more closely at these kinds of tests, you usually see some fine print to address this problem in the form of a cop-out, something like, if you don't feel like these tests reflect your true personality, just change the results, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of measuring these traits in the first place. Alternatively, some companies move in the opposite direction and use a number that seems to be very precise, like the percentage score. In this scenario, instead of chopping up the bell curve into nine slices, they will try to make 100 slices. And this could be valid, but it is misleading for non-experts. It makes it seem like a score of 85 is substantially different than a score of uh, 82, which is such a fine distinction as to be meaningless when talking about personality. So relying on percentage scores distorts the reality of what is actually being measured. To sum up, Creating norm groups allows us to show a candidate's scores in the most accurate way possible by comparing them to people with similar situations in history. And the STAN9 scale gives us a way to normalize the results of a candidate in a meaningful way that shows how their scores compare with other people. I hope this has given you some foundation for understanding what norm groups are and how they are used to calculate your results here at Online Talent Manager. To learn more about our wide library of tests for use in hiring, coaching, training, or research, visit our websites linked in the description of this video. Thank you for listening.